hello again. It's been a while since I've uh, uploaded a video, I think about two weeks now. Um, I've been fairly busy doing other things, but one of the things that's occupied me quite a bit is tidying my workshop. Um, I don't know about you, but when things get, when you've done a number of repairs, a number of jobs, things get a bit haywire and go out of control, tools get misplaced, etc, etc. Uh, and uh, I've spent a couple of days actually tidying the whole place, and we'll have a look more about that in a minute. Um, but this video is going to be uh, about um, retro equipment rather than vintage radios. I don't mind doing vintage radios, in fact I rather enjoy it, but retro equipment, um, something like this uh, Pioneer, this is a Pioneer model SX450 behind me, um, and I've got uh, a uh, Tamburg I'm looking at, but more about that in a minute because that gave me a real run around. Um, but sometimes I like looking at, uh, at retro uh, 70s, 80s equipment rather than the very old vintage equipment. Um, but there we go, I enjoy both of it, but this video is more about the uh, 70s and 80s stuff. Okay, um, in turning out my workshop I came across a box of valves. And this is where I want your help. Now this is vintage, it goes way back. Um, uh, this is uh, an Edison radio valve here, um, uh, quite an old valve, um, octal base, and uh, I found that one. But the one I want, oh, there's a couple of other ones here which are quite ancient, but the one I that mystified me, and I would like some help on if anyone can add some, uh, give me some help on it, is this funny four pin creature. It is really rather strange. I'll give you a close-up of it uh, in a minute. If anyone can identify that, I don't know what it is. It could be a, a bulb of some description, I suppose, but um, it could be a high discharge uh, projector bulb or a valve. I really don't know what it is. It doesn't look like a valve to me, but any help on that uh, would be useful. There's, there's no numbers on it whatsoever. And I can't see much inside it either. Um, I suspect it might be a bulb, but I have no idea. Anyway, there's that one if anyone can help. Um, I think this, these valves deserve, a, probably because I've got lots more of them, um, deserve a video on their own, and I might couple that in with a valve tester. Anyway, let's get on. Um, I've tidied, I, I've done quite a lot of work on, on, on the workshop, which I'm going to show you now. And then um, I'm going to uh, show you the runaround I had on the Tamburg um, Music Centre. Um, and let it be a solitary lesson for anyone who doesn't do their homework first. OK, let's get started. I find that after I've been fixing um, pieces of equipment, uh, a lot of tools and cables and test equipment get mixed up in, and uh, put out of place and then uh, you spend time trying to find them. So I spent a couple of days um, tidying everything and uh, put everything in its correct place, getting rid of lots of stuff I'll never ever use again, getting rid of lots of rubbish. Um, and uh, tidying my three workbenches. I've got the one workbench you can see now, which is where I do most amplifiers that I, I get to look at, and then the one in front of me where I do radios and, and, and turntables and stuff. And then I've got one on the other side that I use for mechanical um, repairs because it's near my pillar drill. I also tidied all my cables um, and uh, tools generally and put them in places where I know I can find them. So I feel much better now I've done that. Oh, and there's my, um, my uh, um, uh, hi-fi setup in the corner there and my pillar drill above it. So yes, I'm now able to carry on um, and start again. Also a bit obsessive uh, about um, having clean pull out drawers here and as you can see I've it was getting in a bit of a shambles but now I've got my screwdrivers most of my bigger screwdrivers sorted there pliers and uh, various other bits and pieces in this one um, so that I can find things quite easily and uh, if we go up um, then I've got uh, my cleaning materials um, ready use. I use this bench mostly for heavy duty stuff and for mechanical repairs um, rather than uh, radio repairs and uh, I've sorted all my cleaning materials and lubricants out as well um, and uh, so that's I'm quite pleased with. 
Um, I've got another bench just here, a smaller workbench, where I'm looking, oh there's that uh, Phillips which still has, hasn't been looked at, but um, that's uh, um, it, that one will be looked at at some point, there's no immediate rush for that. Um, so yeah, um, a bit of a tidy up all round and I'm quite pleased with that. Oh, do you remember the video I had with all the Maplin stuff I bought? Well, um, I've actually bought some of these uh, drawers um, and uh, I think I've got them in Proper Job, um, which is a, a Bristol store and uh, um, they, they came in these three drawer units so um, I've sorted most of that stuff into there and, and that's all ready to go. Um, uh, it needs a little bit more sorting. This bench here I use mainly for amplifiers um, and uh, that's very tidy now as, as is my, my tool set up in that area. Again I find uh, drawer tidies and I think I've got these um, I think I've got them in Ikea fairly cheaply anyway so I bought three of those and that they're ideal for screwdrivers and segregating things out like that um, and uh, yeah so that's done. I've got a similar um, rack on my uh, my main bench and I think most of these screwdrivers and pliers came from Lidl they do they're very good value and um, they're fine they, they do the job very well so yeah that's my my bench clear out and uh, I'm quite happy with all that so um, and today is the first day of spring uh, I should be out doing a spring video I started one a couple of days ago but uh, didn't get very far anyway this video is not going to be about vintage radio as you may have guessed it's going to be about retro hi-fi yep um, vintage radio has its has its place, and uh, I love working on it. And sometimes you just want a little bit of a change. So uh, most of this equipment is uh, 80, 70s and 80s stuff, early 80s, and um, stuff that was well received in its day, but um, is now becoming a little bit dated. But people that have them love them. They love to own this equipment. So the two amplifiers I'm going to be checking out is this one, which is the Tamberg, with um, reportedly low phono input sensitivity. And this is the one that really gave me the run around. Um, and the other one is the Pioneer, uh, which has uh, a bit of a hum problem. So yeah, it's refreshing to work on this um, retro equipment rather than some of the old vintage stuff. So let's have a look at this one. The reported problem with this was low output from phono, FM, auxiliary and radio were working fine. And this is where I started my run around. I suspected the uh, the two op-amp preamp chip, um, which is shown in the picture here, and did all the measurements from that and they were all good. Eventually, I found at the back there was a magnetic ceramic cartridge selector switch, which was selected to the ceramic position which obviously reduced the input sensitivity uh, and not the magnetic. When I switched it to magnetic everything burst back into life because there was a magnetic cartridge fitted to the turntable. So a lot of time wasted just because I failed to make a basic simple check and only found this by referring to the circuit diagram and finding the switch on it. So there you go, lesson learnt. Um, and uh, once that was in the right position, things started to work. However, there was a further problem because there was distortion, and this was caused by an incorrect turntable setup. In order to prove that there was nothing wrong with the Tamberg amplifier and input circuitry, I connected my turntable up to the uh, phono input of the Tamberg, um, also a magnetic uh, cartridge in my deck, and uh, fed it in through with a switch in the correct position. And this is what you can hear. This you're listening to now is on, um, on uh, my deck being fed into the amplifier of the Tamberg. Well, thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> that runaround video with the, with the Tamberg. And uh, I, I'm just going to end with this um, classic piece of 
boombox equipment I've got on my, my desk here. Uh, it's a Sharp GF8585 and I acquired this one um, some time ago. Um, got the radio a bit working, the deck needs some work on it as all these things normally do. But it's, it's working The world's fine. greatest music. Classic FM. So... Anyway, it works absolutely fine. It's got uh, um, uh, loudness FM, it's got um, short wave, medium wave and long wave and of course the, uh, uh, the, the, the tape player um, and auto select and various other things on it and it's got a terrific sound on it so um, I'm really quite pleased with it. No more of that in case I do some copyright damage but there we go um, I'm pleased with that Thank you for watching this video on retro equipment, 60s and 70s equipment, and uh, I'll be back very soon um, with uh, perhaps some more on the Volves and the Volve Tester, but maybe uh, some more on the um, uh, some vintage radios that uh, I've recently acquired. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you again soon. But as always, take care.